If you like these videos, you can easily support this channel by subscribing, by liking the video, and by leaving comments. Feel free to ask any questions you have or suggest videos you'd like to see in the future. Thanks for the support. Hello, in this video we are going to cover Angular. Here's a list of all the topics that we're going to be going through in this video. We're going to be moving really quickly, so if you find that we're going too fast, feel free to pause the video and get caught up. Here's a demo of some of the things we will be learning in this tutorial. It's not pretty, but I wanted to focus more on learning Angular than on making things look really good. As you can see, we will learn how to load a list of products. We can add a product, let's say iPod and 50, then we press Add. We can also edit a product, so let's change the name here, then press Save, and if we navigate away from the page and back, our changes are saved. We will also learn routing and navigation with Angular, so you can click back and forth between the Home and the Products page. And we will also learn two-way binding with inputs, which is what's causing the text here to mirror the input. And we can also delete products like this. And we'll also learn how to add some animation to Angular, as you can see here. There's a GitHub repository here with the final code of everything we learned in this tutorial. So if you can't get something to work, try pulling down the code here to see if you're missing anything. So first, what are some of the key features of Angular? Well, it's a full framework, unlike React, which is basically just a view library. So Angular is opinionated in how you do every part of your coding. So Angular has prescriptions for how you should write your view, for how you should organize your model. It has services for how you should organize your code. It has a router, and it has its own method of doing HTTP requests. In addition to being a full framework, Angular is also really easy to use, so you can get up and running really quickly. It's scalable. A lot of enormous companies use Angular. It's fast, and it has great animations also. So really quickly, what's special about Angular 5? Well, there's not too much difference between Angular 2, 4, and 5. And Angular actually prefers just to be called Angular now without the version number. The only real big difference was between Angular 1 and Angular 2, which introduced a lot of breaking changes. But then 2, 4, and 5 are just improvements upon the same basic architecture. Angular 5 introduces a few improvements, but they're not enormously significant. OK, so let's get started. I'm here at the Angular website, and let's learn how to install Angular. So let's click on Get Started, and then let's just follow these instructions here. So let's do npm install. And before you begin, you need to have Node.js installed, so you can go to the Node.js website and install the latest version of Node right here. And then I'm going to do npm install dash g at angular slash cli, press enter. It's going to install. Wait for that to finish. And then I'm going to do ng new my app, except I'll do Angular tutorial to name it something different. Wait for that to finish. And then I'm going to do these instructions right here. I'll do cd angular tutorial. And then I'll do ng serve dash dash open, which is going to open the app directly in our browser. So we run that. And you see that the app directly opens in our browser right here. And here it is. Now let's open up the code and take a look at it. So I'm going to go to cd, the folder that we installed it in, open up my text editor. I'm using Sublime right here. And then let's take a look at the code. Let's take a look in app. This is where our key code is going to be. And you'll see that in the app.component, we have a selector here called app-root. So this tells us where the component is going to be rendered. And if you look in the index.html here, you'll see that there is an app-root here. So that's where that component is being rendered. And this is actually the parent or the heart of our application. This is where everything is going to be registered. So you see that here we have the app component. Uh, it's declared here in the declarations. And this is app.component right here. And this is where the root is being rendered. So basically this root component right here is registered in the app.module, which is the heart of our application. You'll notice that here we have some interesting syntax. We have an at and then ng module. This is basically TypeScript syntax. And then these are metadata properties within TypeScript. And so Angular here is using TypeScript, which is a way to structure JavaScript in a way that's similar to other languages. So it enforces types, and it just makes code more organized and more understandable. You also see in here, app.component, we have an at component TypeScript decorator here. And in here, we have component metadata. So as we saw earlier, this is the selector, which basically tells us the name of the element, as we saw right here. The app-root is right here. The template URL tells us where the template of this component is going to be. We see that it's in the .html file, which is right here. 
And so you see that in here we have the welcome to title, and then the image right there, and then the links down here like that. And then finally we have the style URLs. This is the .css file, and this basically points us to where the styles for the components going to live. And so here we have this. If we typed in something like h1 color green, that would change the style of our h1 just like that. So this is where we can manage our styles. Let's change that back. Next, let's talk about interpolation binding, which is Angular's name for basically what this double bracket is doing. You see that here we have the double bracket and then the title inside. And then the title here actually comes from app.component. You see that in this component class, we have a title equals app right here. And so if we change this app to something else, let's say welcome to this tutorial, that will automatically refresh and change right here. We can change this to anything that we want. We can change this to a uh, number also, actually. So we can change it to 2323, and that'll change just like that. We can create a different property. So let's say name equals Michael, and then let's put that into our component also. Let's add that welcome to title, and then let's do my name is name. Save it, and you'll see that that shows up also. Next, let's talk a little bit about global and component scoped styles. So as we saw here, we have a styles URLs thing that has a CSS file. This basically means that this CSS file is going to be scoped to this component. But since this is the app root, we would probably want to put our global styles in this CSS file. And then when we create other files, we'll create scoped styles just for that single component, which will make our app faster because not all of the styles will be applied to every single component we'll only be loading the styles that are relevant for the component that we're loading. Next, let's learn how to generate a component using the CLI or the terminal. So here, let's do ng generate component and let's name this component products. So that's going to generate our component. And now you'll see if we go back to our text editor, there's going to be a new folder here titled products and it has basically the same four files as the app uh, component right here. We have the main file right here that points towards our selector, our template URL, and our styles URL. This is also a test file, but we won't worry about that for this tutorial. So now, if we want to use this component, we're going to use our selector here, app products. Let's just put that into our app component.html right here. First, let's delete all of this. Let's just first give this a title, say this is our products manager. And then let's put in our component, which is basically app products like that, and then let's close it, and then we need to close this div right here, save it. So now we see that that shows up correctly. We have the products works here, because in this HTML, that's what it has in here, and we can replace this by saying, this is my products page, save it, and that'll show up correctly right there. We can also style it here, saying, let's say, uh, P, so this will be scoped to this component right here. Let's say color uh, orange, and it'll turn orange just like that. But let's get rid of that for now. Next, let's talk about lifecycle hooks. You'll see here that we have an ng on init here. Basically what this will do is it'll run whatever code is in here when this component is initialized. And you can see that we imported it up here, and then we put it implements down here. Other lifecycle hooks that are available to you are ng on changes, ng do check after content init on destroy, etc. So you can use any of these. So let's try it out. Let's go back to our text editor. And then in here, let's just console log. Um, this is in the on init lifecycle hook. Save it. And we'll see that that code automatically runs. Next, let's learn how to create and use a class. So in our app here, let's create a new file. Let's call it product.ts. And this file is basically going to be export class. And let's have it export a product. And this product is going to contain an ID of number and a name of string and a price of number. And then back in our product component.ts, let's import this class in. So let's say import product from dot dot slash product, which is where the file is. And then in here, we're going to define a property called product. And it's going to be of type product and then equals 
then we'll define the ID to be one, the name to be, let's say, iPhone, and the price to be 650. And then back in our HTML, let's put in the product. Let's say um, name, product.name, and then let's make this a div so that it's on new lines. And then down here, we'll do the same thing with the price. We'll say price is product.price. And let's actually turn this P here into a div because you can't have divs inside of a P. Save it. And now we see that our name and our price have shown up correctly on the browser. Angular also has these scenes called pipes that you can use to format your text. Here's a list of the available built-in pipes that you can use right here. And you can also build your own. Let's just try out uppercase and percent for now. So to use the pipe, we add a pipe after the text here. And then let's do uppercase here. And when we refresh, we'll see that the text is now uppercase. And then let's try to add a percent pipe next to our number, even though this isn't a percent. When we refresh it, we see that it's now a percent. But since we don't want this to be a percent, let's just delete this for now. Now let's learn about two-way data binding with ng model and inputs. We'll first write the code and then explain what's going on. So let's create an input and put square brackets, parentheses, and ng model equals product.name which is the syntax for ng model and two-way binding. And you'll see that we get an error in the console because ng model requires us to first import the forms module. To do this, let's go to the app.module and at the top left, let's do import forms module from angular slash forms. And then in the imports array, let's add forms module. And now when we save, we'll see that the input displays correctly. And now whatever we type in the input is mirrored in the text below. This is called two-way data binding, which basically means that the product.name is flowing in both directions between the HTML template and the TypeScript component data. The value in the input is defined from the product definition in the component data, and it's also itself updating the data in the component. Now let's talk about declaring components. Notice that here we have a declarations property with an array of components that are being used in the app. The reason why product component is in this array, even though we never added it explicitly, is that when we did ng-generate component product in the terminal, that command automatically adds the code for declaring that component to the app.module file. Now let's learn how to display a list with ng4. To do this, let's first change the single product in product.component to be an array. So let's add square brackets here, and then do some formatting. And then let's add two more products to the array. Let's say ID2, name, MacBook Pro, and price 650. And then let's say ID 3, name iPad, and price 200. And then let's go to the HTML template and let's change the surrounding divs to be an unordered list. And then let's create an li tag with an attribute of star ng4 let product of products. The star is a necessary part of the syntax here. And then let's close the tag. And then let's move everything below into the li tag. And we also need to change the property name from product to products. Let's save, and now we see that our three products display correctly on the page. And notice that each input in each product has two-way binding. So if we update the input, the name of the product below will change accordingly. And let's get rid of the percent pipe here before we move on. Next, let's learn about event handlers. To add an event handler, let's add an attribute of parentheses click equals on select product. Again, the parentheses here is necessary for the syntax. Now let's go back to our TypeScript file and add this method. So on select product, and this method will take a product as a parameter. So let's go back to the HTML file and pass product into the method here. And then back in the TypeScript file, Let's say this dot selected product equals product. And then above, 
let's define the selected product property to be a product. Now in the HTML file, below the unordered list, let's display the selected product. Let's first create a title that says selected product. And then let's just display the selected product dot name below. Now when we save, we'll get an error because selected product isn't defined yet and we're trying to access the name property from something that is undefined. To fix this, we can first define an initial selected product in the ng on init method. So we can write in here this.selectedProduct equals this.products and then the first item in the array with a zero. This works because this code will be run before the HTML template is rendered. Let's save and we'll see now that this first product is displayed as the selected product. And then when we click on another product's name, the selected product will update accordingly. Now let's learn about conditional rendering with ngif. Let's say we didn't want to initialize the selected product to anything, so let's delete this code in ng on init. To fix the error in the console, we can choose to only render the selected product if it exists. To do this, let's go to the HTML template and let's create a div with the property star ngif equals selected product. So, this tag will only render if selected product exists. And let's move the selected product code into this div tag. Let's save, and now you'll see that the error does not show up. And if we click on a product name, we'll see that the selected product code then shows up properly. Now let's learn about dynamic classes. First, let's just add a regular class to the list item called product. And then let's go to the CSS file and say product has a font family of sans serif, just like this. We'll save and we'll see that this is applied to our component, just like that. Next, we'll add a dynamic class that will only show up if the condition is satisfied. So first, let's multi-line the li tag to make it more readable. And then let's add square brackets class.selected equals selected product.name, triple equals product.name. This means that the selected class will only show up if the name of the selected product is the same as the name of the product in the list. And then in the CSS file, let's add another class that says that if the product and selected class are together, we'll make the color red. Just like that. And we actually need to first make sure that the selected product exists here first to prevent the error in the console again. Let's save. And now, if we click on a product, we see that the text turns red appropriately. And if we inspect the element, we'll see that it's because the selected class has dynamically appeared on the element because it is selected. Now let's learn about passing properties with the input decorator. Let's first generate a new component that we will be passing a property into. Let's write ng generate component product detail. And then in our text editor, we'll see that the new folder for the product detail component we just generated has appeared and we see that the selector is app product detail. We want to replace our code for the selected product with this new product detail component. So let's go to the HTML file of the product component and then let's add the app product detail component below the list. And for this component we want to pass in the selected product by writing square brackets product equals selected product. And then let's copy and cut the code below, go to the HTML file of the product detail component. And let's replace the code here with the code that we just copied. And then let's replace each of the selected products here with just product. And we'll see that there's an error in the console because to pass a property into a component, we need to use the input decorator. So let's import input into this component and then let's define the product property as an input by writing at input then product then the class product which is the type of the property product that's being passed in and we need to import product here from dash dash slash product so now when we click on a product the product detail component displays correctly and nothing is broken so what's going on here is that we are passing in a product property to the product detail component and the product detail component is accessing that property with the input decorator. And since this is a product detail component, let's add some details to the HTML template. Let's put divs around the name, make the name bold or strong, 
And then let's copy this line and change the information to the ID of the product. So ID there and ID there. And let's copy the line again and change the things to price. So price there and price there. So now the product detail component displays all three pieces of information when we click on a product. Now let's learn about services. Services are a way to organize our code by moving API logic out of our component code to keep the component code as dumb or as simple as possible. So right now we have our products list hard-coded in our component. We want to actually get this list of products from an API call, which we'll make in a service. So let's create our service by going back to the terminal and typing ng generate service product. And then now back in our text editor, we have a file called product.service.ts. And we'll see that in here, we have an injectable decorator. The injectable decorator basically says that the service might have injected dependencies. It doesn't yet, but it will soon. And even if it never does, it's best practice to just always keep the injectable decorator in the service. So now in the service file, let's first import the product class like this. And then let's create a constant with our list of products. We'll eventually look at getting this list from an HTTP request, but let's just keep things simple for now. So let's copy over the list from the products file, and let's just turn the products property here into a declaration of an array of the product class. Let's paste the products here, do some formatting, just like that. And then let's create a get products method that returns an array of the product class and then it'll just return products. And then back in app.module, let's import the product service from product.service.ts. And then let's add the product service to the providers array. We could have added a dash dash module equals app flag when we created our service to have this be done automatically. We'll use this flag when we add the router in the next section. Now let's go back to the products component where we're going to use the product service. And let's first import product service from product.service. And then let's define the product service in the constructor by doing private product service equals product service. And then in ng on init, let's call a method called this.getProducts. And then let's define the getProducts method below. It's not going to return anything, so let's do void and then this.productService.getProducts. And then let's set this equal to a constant called products. And then let's just do this.products equals products. And this equal sign up here should actually be a colon. Let's save. And we see that the list of products displays correctly again. So basically, our product service is in charge of everything related to getting the list of products. And all the products component needs to do is ask for the products, which keeps it as simple as possible. This means we could change the details of how we get the products in the service, and the products component could just stay exactly the same. Now let's learn about routing in Angular. First, let's install the router by doing ng generate module app routing, app routing, dash dash flat, dash dash module equals app. The flat flag will keep the router at the root level instead of creating a new folder, and the module equals app flag will automatically add it to the app.module file. Now we'll see that we have an app.routing file. And also, in app.module, we see that the app routing module has automatically been added to the file. Now, in our app.routing file, let's first delete code that we won't need. Let's get rid of the declarations property, and let's get rid of the import, too. Then, let's import router module and routes from angular slash router. And then let's create a constant named routes that is of the routes class. And it's going to be an array of routes objects. So let's create a route with path products and component products component. Just like that. 
and then let's just copy the products component import from app.module and paste that into our app.routing file and then down here let's import the router module just like that and then let's export router module dot for root and then we'll pass in routes and this should actually be a colon up here this is basically going to listen to route changes and then display the correct component when a route matches one of the paths in the array that we defined above now in app.component.html let's replace the app-products tag with a router outlet tag which is going to be where the router displays the component that matches with the route so now if we refresh the page there won't be any products here but if we add a slash products to the end of the URL now the products component will load and we will see our list of products and if we go back to the root URL the products list won't show up now let's add some navigation let's create nav tags and then inside an a tag with an attribute of router link slash products which is the syntax for using the app routing module and then let's just make the text products and now when we click on products it'll navigate us to the products URL where we'll see the list of products let's create one more link for the home page even though we won't have anything there right now let's copy this line and then change the path to just slash and then change the text to home now we can click back and forth between the products page and the home page next let's learn about HTTP requests and observables with Angular Angular's way of doing HTTP requests utilizes RxJS and observables we're not going to cover observables deeply in this video but observables basically emit events that other things called observers can respond to observables allow us to perform multiple actions on one event efficiently so first to get an introductory idea of how observables work let's first ignore HTTP requests for now and just turn the result of the get products method in our product.service file into an observable that our products component will subscribe to so let's do import observable from rxjs slash observable and then we'll do import of from rxjs slash slash observable slash of and then let's turn the return type of get products into an observable with an array of products as its type just like that and then let's return of products instead of just products of basically turns whatever it is called with into an observable next in our product component file after this dot product service dot get products let's add a subscribe which is going to have the list of products in this callback function and then let's set this dot products to products and then let's just delete this code below and now when we refresh we'll see that we get our list of products correctly again basically in the get products method of product service we are emitting an event and sending the list of products and then in this get products method we are subscribing to that observable so that when it emits the list of products the callback function in subscribe will be called so then we can act upon the list of products that is sent now let's learn how actual HTTP requests work so first in the app.module file let's import HTTP client module from at angular slash comments slash HTTP and then let's add HTTP client module to the imports array just like that next we're actually going to use something called angular in memory web API to mock out our backend so we don't need to set up a server or a database we'll basically set up a file with a list of our products and then this package will intercept our HTTP requests and return what we expect since we only want to learn about HTTP requests with Angular in this video and not about how to set up a server and a database this package is a good way to keep us focused on our topic so let's go to our terminal and type npm i-s angular in memory web API and then back on our app.module file let's do import HTTP client in memory web API module from angular in memory web API and also import in memory data service from in 
memory data dot service. We haven't created the in memory data service yet, but we will soon. And let's add another import to the array. It'll be HTTP client in memory web API module dot for root, which will watch for API requests. And then we'll pass in the in memory data service. And then we'll set data encapsulation to false. Don't worry about what all of this means since this is just our mock backend database and we don't really need to understand it at this point. When we're ready to use an actual backend and database, we can just replace the in-memory web API module with that backend and database by deleting the in-memory data service that we're about to create. Now let's create the in-memory data service. Let's go back to the terminal and type ng generate service in-memory data. And now, back in our text editor, we have an in-memory data.service file. In this class, let's create a method called createDB. And in here, let's put our list of products. So let's just go back to the products component file and copy the list of products there, just like this. And then let's paste that into the in-memory data.service file. And then let's just return products. And then let's just add spaces here for style. Next, in the product service file, let's import HTTP client and HTTP headers from Angular slash common slash HTTP. And then in the constructor, let's define a private HTTP variable with type HTTP client. And then let's define a private products URL variable with value API slash products, which the in-memory web API module will be intercepting. And then let's change the of products into an actual HTTP request. Let's instead return this.http.get, and we'll be getting a product array that hero there was a mistake, so put product there instead of hero. And then we'll call the get method with just the products URL. And if we refresh now, we'll see that we still get the list of products correctly. That's because the in-memory web API module sees that we're sending a get request and it's responding with a list of products. And our code in the products component is already subscribing to the HTTP observable and handling things correctly there. Now let's take a look at some of the power of observables by adding some more responses to the event that's being emitted by this HTTP observable. To add responses to the event, we add a pipe method and let's first pass a catch error response in there, which we'll call a method we will define called this.handleError. And let's just pass what we're doing here into the method, which is get products, as well as an empty array, which we'll return if there's an error to keep the app running. Next, let's define the handle error method, which we'll be reusing for all of the methods that we create later on. Let's do private handle error, and then it'll return a generic type and its parameters will be the operation we're performing, which will just be defaulted to operation, and also an optional result, which can be a variety of types. And then inside of handle error, since we've already called it with the operation and result, it's going to actually be a closure that returns a function, and this function will have a parameter of error of type any, and it'll return an observable of a generic type. And then in this function, we will console log out the error and and the type of operation that we're doing. And then we'll return an observable of the result that we passed in. And we also need to import catch error at the top. And let's just also import map and tap from rxjs slash operators. We'll be using tap soon, and although we won't be using map, it's another common option that is used for observables. And now when we refresh, we'll see that the code runs without any error. If you don't fully understand all that's going on here, don't worry. The focus of this lesson isn't about closures or TypeScript syntax, and this method won't ever really be called anyways, since we won't have any errors with our API. The purpose of this code here is to demonstrate a little bit what we can do with observables and how we can respond to them in multiple useful ways. Next, let's add a tap event to the pipe stream. Tap basically lets us tap into the stream and do something before the observable event is emitted. So let's write tap, and then it'll be a callback, 
Well, let's just console log out fetched products here. And now you'll see that in addition to getting the products, fetched products is also logged to the console. In the pipe, we can do any number of things to manipulate the event that is being emitted by the observable, which is what makes observable so powerful. Now let's learn how to get the details of a single product by its ID. First, let's create a new method called getProduct, which will take ID as an argument. It'll return an observable of type product. And then in the method, let's say const URL equals this dot products URL. And then the ID of the product. And then we will return this dot HTTP dot get. It'll get something of type product. And then let's do the same two pipes that we did above. We'll do tap and then we will console log fetched product of ID and then the product ID. Then we'll do catch error and we'll pass in this dot handle error which will just return a single product this time and the operation will be and that should actually be get product, not get hero. Sorry, I'm basing this tutorial on Angular's hero tutorial. And then we'll also pass in the ID of the product. Now let's just make sure this works by going to the products component file. And then in on select product, let's do this dot product service dot get product. And let's just say two here. We could also put in the ID of the product we're clicking on, but we're just testing here, not doing anything serious. And then let's subscribe. And then let's just console log the product that returns. So now, if we click on a product, the product details, which are coming from the API call in the product service, will be logged to the console. Now let's learn how to save a product. Right now, if we edit the name of a product like this, then click Home, and then return to the Products page, we'll see that our changes aren't saved. Let's write code to save our changes. So first, let's go to the product's HTML file, and let's add a Save button to each product with the text Save right there. And then let's add a click handler that's equal to Save, just like that, and then we'll pass in the product. Now, in the TypeScript file, let's add the save method. It takes a product, it'll be void, and then we'll do this dot product service dot update product, and then we'll pass in the updated product, just like, just like that. And then, in the product service file, let's add the update product method. So update product, it'll take a product of class product, and it'll return an observable of type any, since we won't actually be using the value of the observable. And then we'll return this.http.put. And then we'll pass in the product's URL, the product, and HTTP options, which we'll define above soon. Just like that. And then we will do the same two pipes that we did above. So let's do tap, and then we will console log the updated product. of id product dot id and then we will do catch error and pass in this dot handle error it'll return a type of any and the operation will be update product now let's just delete this product array up here since we're not using it anymore and then let's write const http options equals an object with a property of headers that is going to be new HTTP headers. And then content type, content type, and then application slash JSON. And 
And now back in the products component file, let's subscribe to the observable and just console log product saved. And now, if we update a product's name, just like that, and then click Save, we see the things we wanted to log to the console, showing that we've successfully saved the product. And let's just update another product too, just like that, Save. So if we navigate to Home, and then back to Products, we'll see that our change has persisted. Now let's write code to add a product to the list. To do this, let's go to the Products HTML file and add at the top a div and then in the div, we'll have an input with pound or hashtag, name input and placeholder name. The pound sign is basically a reference to the input element. Ideally, we would probably not put this logic in the HTML, but this will help to keep things simple for now. And then let's copy this line and change this new, and change this new line to price input and placeholder price. And then let's add a button that says add. And then let's create a click handler called add, and we'll pass in name input dot value and price input dot value. And then we'll just go ahead and clear the inputs when we click on this button too. So let's also write after this name input dot value equals empty string and price input dot value equals empty string. And then in the products component file, let's create that method. So add, it'll take a name of string and a price of number. It'll be void. And then let's just first console log the name and price to make sure that we're getting those correctly. So let's just type things into the inputs and then let's click add and we see that the name and input are properly logged to the console. Now let's replace the console log with this dot product service dot add product and let's pass in an object with the name and price. So there's the object and the name and price and then let's declare that object as a product class and then let's subscribe And then let's do this dot products dot push product to add this product to the view. Now in the product service file, let's add an add product method. So add product, it'll take a product of type product, it'll return an observable of type product, just like that. And then inside this method, Let's return this.http.post, then product, and then we'll pass in products URL, the product, and HTTP options, and then we'll do the two pipes again. So dot pipe. So let's write tap, which will receive, which will receive the product that we added, which will be of type product. And then let's console log added product. So added product. ID with ID. And then product.id. And then let's do catch error. Pass in this dot handle error, which will return a product. And the operation will be add product. Let's save and now let's try adding a product with name iPod and price 50 and we, see, and we see that it's been properly added to the list. Now let's just try adding one more product. Let's say Apple whatever blah blah and then price whatever and we see that it's also been added correctly to the list. Now let's write code to delete a product. First, let's go to the product HTML file and let's add a delete button to each product. Then let's add a click handler that calls delete and let's pass in the product ID. Then in the TypeScript file, let's create a delete method. So delete, which will take a product ID of type number. It'll be void. And let's just first remove the product from the view by doing this dot product equals this dot products dot filter. And we only want to keep the products that don't match with the product ID that we clicked on. So just like that. Then 
let's do this dot product service dot delete product and let's pass in the product ID and then let's just subscribe so that the delete action happens since we're already filtering off the deleted product above then let's go to the product service file and let's create the delete product method it'll take a product ID which will be a number and let's say it'll return a product even though we won't use it and then in the method let's write const URL equals this dot products URL slash product ID then we will return this dot HTTP dot delete then product and then we'll pass in the URL and HTTP options and then we will pipe the same two things again so let's do tap and then we will do console log deleted product of ID and then product ID and then catch error pass in this dot handle error then product and then the operation will be delete product really quickly let's go to the in-memory data service file and fix the ID of the third product to be 3 and now we see that if we click on the delete button for a product it'll disappear from the list correctly Next, let's learn how to do animations with Angular. I'm on the animations page for the Angular docs, so let's just follow some of these instructions. First, let's do import browser animations module from angular slash platform browser slash animations. Then let's add this module to the imports array. Then let's scroll a little ways down and copy these imports for animations. Then let's go to the products component file and paste them at the top. Then let's scroll down to the enter and leave animation section. And let's copy this snippet of code and let's paste it in the component decorator. We're not going to go into details about this snippet but the name of this animation is fly in out the void to star or basically nothing to something is going to be the enter animations and the star to void is going to be the exit animations now let's go to the HTML file and add an attribute to the li tag of square brackets at fly in out which will apply the animation to this element and now when we save we'll see the list fly in let's go back to the TypeScript file and let's slow down the animation a little bit to one second so now we can see the animation more easily now let's try some different animations. Instead of flying out, let's try to do color red here. So now when we click delete, we, we see the text turn red and then disappear. And then let's try opacity zero. And now when we click delete, we'll see the product fade away and then disappear. And that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.